logically speaking, this is the best time for me to make a knife, as I've just learned a whole bunch of things not to do, so that hopefully I can turn this scrap of leaf spring into an oversized paring knife, and it'll all work out well. Hopefully. Hello and welcome back to Dark and Ember Forge. Today we are going to be making I'm not 100% sure what to call it. It's a paring knife, but it's a little bit bigger. Uh, over last summer, we were using our paring knife to slice apples, but the blade on it is a little too short to cut it cleanly through. And then the next knife up is like, well, an eight inch blade or so. So it's a little bit too big. So I want something kind of in between. This is, a, that's not a measuring apparatus. This is about a five inch blade, roughly. I know it might look big because I have it close to the camera. It's enormous. And I have this, uh, like I say, scrap of leaf spring from when I made the spatula. So I'm going to do my best to heat this up and work it into a blade. Let's get her warming up and see where we go from here. See you at the anvil. Probably just introduce way more problems than it cleaned up. <laughs> We're starting out by working the grip to size, trying to get it roughly the right width, roughly, well, a little bit thinner than it started, and give it perhaps a little bit of room to work some. Uh, not really decorative bits into, but uh, I wanted a few little lumps and bumps to give my fingers a little better grip. Though I think for that, I'm going to want to uh, widen it a touch. But the main reason for doing the, the grip first is because it is going to be thicker than the blade, so subsequent reheatings are less likely to really damage it. Nope, that did not work. <laughs> that was a fun experiment, right? Despite sketching out the size I want, well, yeah, no, I did overshoot that. Huh, okay, well. Good to know, I suppose. Glad I didn't work that too hard. Okay, well. start working on the blade. Step one, knock you back. I'll rough out the tip shape. Chuckle at how much it's pretzeled the whole way. Ah, ah. More burns on the hand. Okay. Let's see if I regret my choice of uh, switch up here. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> Regret the uh, scale in the face. Long ways to go to get that whole thing tapered out correctly. I think that probably worked out a little too thin. part about trying to get the distal taper in this section is that this section here is so thin. Hmm. I wonder if I shouldn't just uh, work on the bevels for now and see if I need to tweak it at the end. now we look like a big butter knife with that round end on it. I want to keep forging the edge thinner, but from previous experience I think I'm not going to do that. <laughs> also I went a little bit long and I did not get this part squeezed out enough. I'm wondering if I should tap this area with like a little miniature fuller here to push that out. I might just do that. I'm weighing the rewards, like try something new, trying something untested might have a chance of, you know, messing the whole thing up. Or just, you know, play around and experiment with this uh, low key knife. experiment. Basically this little lady can be used as kind of a butcher tool or in this case a spring swedge or a little round swedge. You can put different dies in it based on what you need. But if you have her lined up this way you can run your things long ways and use it for making folders. Very simple little thing. Uh, I don't have the gear to manufacture one so I just blazed out and bought one. <laughs> set up. I can see where it definitely put a little fuller in the thicker part of the grip there. And a little bit up there where that was a little too thick too. Hmm. Now I think I just want to get a little cleanup on this, get the edges a little more aligned and
nervous by how thin that, uh, what would that be, the Ricasso area got. suppose here's hoping I can clean it up enough that it will be uh, functional <laughs> Though I have little hope for it. I think this one might just come down to another practice session, shall we say. Pointless planishing, my favorite. Okay, stop that. I'm already way too thin, which will be good because I'll cut that end off and I'll thicken it up a touch. Anyway, I'm going to give this a bit of an anneal to hopefully de-stress it a bit from all that pounding I've done on it. And we will get to the grinder with it tomorrow. I'll see you there and we will make this look more like a knife hopefully. So having cleaned the scale off a little bit, I must say it does not look very knife-like. Comparing it to my initial sketch, it is, um, shall we say, quite a ways off. I have nearly enough room in the handle to carve the handle shape out of. I didn't get the curve on the end as I intended. I was originally thinking, oh, I can just heat that up and move it down afterwards. If I really need to, I can, after I've uh, did the grinding but not the hardening. And I said, nah, no, no, I don't really need to deal with that. But I could, if I really want to. But I say, it's not that big of a deal to me. There'll be enough room to cut out little bits here to get a better grip for the fingers. It's the blade that's the real trouble. I'm pretty sure that if I would have looked closer at this when I was making it, I would have noticed that uh, the area where my blade and my grip meet, the Ricasso area, was the thinnest part in pretty much, well, not all dimension, because the whole thing was uniform thickness at one point, but it was the thinnest part. It was where my cut went a little wonky. So trying to figure out how am I going to cut the blade out, I considered kind of just going along the back edge of it, keeping the back edge straight, which leaves a chunk to be cut out there, but leaves only a little bit of the blade edge being missed, essentially. And I said, well, if I want a nice straight blade edge, I could kind of do it the other way. and move it there and just sort of, well, cut the blade out. That just puts the blade and the grip pretty much on the exact same line, which I wasn't terribly excited about. I hummed and I hawed and I looked at it. I tried to I was considering doing little sketches like, well, if I darken this part and make, basically drawing a knife onto it to cut out. At some point, it kind of hit me. This is very similar to what I did when I was a kid. I'd take a scrap piece of wood or whatnot, I'd look at it, and I'd say, what kind of sword? Again, I was a kid who read Stone's Glossary. <laughs> what kind of sword or knife or other implement do I want to make out of this? So I feel that that's essentially what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take this piece of potentially, well, potentiality, potential potentiality. This piece of just, who knows what it could be. I am a little worried as it seems kind of a bit more 
Now, a little bit more bendy than a lot of the pieces have been when annealed. After that ulu and how much it, well, just twisted all over the place. Uh, I'm a little, uh, a little gun shy there, I suppose we could say. Yeah, I think my primary purpose is going to be, or primary focus, is going to be flattening it a bit and getting the edges or the flats of it cleaned up a bit. And probably at that point, once I have it squared away, I'm going to stop again, stare at it like a monkey doing a math problem until I can figure out where I want or how I would need to grind to get a knife out of it. This is sort of a fact-finding mission. It's almost like archaeology in a way. I'm going in, I'm kind of digging away at the layers of dirt and whatnot, layers of scale in this case, to find the unique and amazing culture hidden underneath. Unbeknownst to me, I was forging a stock removal knife when it was all said and done. Ah, boy. Time to determine where my bevels need to go. Gonna get a little layout juice. I have to say, I find it pretty funny that in my attempt to forge a knife, I forged a blank for a stock removal knife, essentially. As you can see, most of, well, if I can get in shot well, there's no real thinning between the spine and the edge, uh, except in tiny little spots here and there, which are pretty rough. Of course, they're all rough because I haven't ground them yet. I've uh, painted it up with a little uh, daikon blue here to give it some marks so I can scribe a line into it and have something to aim for as to where my bevels need to go. Though as thin as it is, and as thick as it's supposed to be for heat treating, Part of me was wondering if I should just completely ignore bevels and leave them to the very end after it's been hardened and tempered. I'm a little bit scared, though using the relatively fresh belt and running it faster, which was a tip I found, uh, actually does not heat it up as much as it had been when I was going slower and, well, I think primarily with old belts. <laughs> but anyway, I... Uh, Used uh, a little bit of the dicum there to make some marks. You might be able to see the little plus on that circle to give me a spot to aim for. And got a couple holes drilled in. Um, not quite centered. They were mostly set up to be a certain length away from the back end, so they are in a fairly good line. Uh, yeah. Uh, without any more ado, let's figure out where the heck I want the uh, bevel to be. I want this to be, you know, it's going to be a kitchen knife. It's going to be a, a paring knife, essentially. Um, hmm. Let's see, how thick was about the thickest part? Yeah, so I want it to be fairly thin, fairly light and agile. <laughs> light and agile, talking about it like I'm planning on sticking people with it. I want it to be light and thin, so it's easy to sharpen. It's easy to slide through whatever I'm trying to cut with it. I'm just going to use calipers here as a marker, as uh, inexact as they are. <laughs> this might be better if I had something to clamp it in. Gee, if only I had a clamp or something. Now, if I did that correctly, the two lines on each side, I don't even know if you can see them in the light here, Oh yeah, yeah, they show up but nicely. But those two lines should be right across from each other. How well did we do there? Not well. Not well at all. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Which simply tells me, I think, that I had like pushed too far in one direction or... Grumble, grumble, grumble. Of course, the fact that that's not perfectly square. First line was the better one. Yeah. So 
So now I have the tricky thing of trying to get a bevel to that first line on each of them. Yeah, perfect. While keeping the edge centered, for one, which is anybody's guess here. <laughs> I'm just going to have to do that one by feel, and that scares the heck out of me. Is uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very beginning. And keeping it thick enough for the heat treat. This is going to be... Uh, terrifying, I suppose, would be the uh, quick answer for that, right? I will get my safety gear on and we will start grinding. Hey, look at that. It's not perfect for sure, but it is a pretty reasonable bevel for being the first knife that I've ever really tried to get a reasonable, even, square, perfect bevel. Uh, yeah, for a first one, that's not too bad, I think. I hope, I pray. <laughs> I'm hoping that the edge of it isn't a little too thin. I think it probably is, knowing my luck, especially near the tip there. Yeah, I might give that a quick little, uh, give that a little bit more, and then we will go fight with the heat treat. Hooray. So I had a little uh, snafu with the quench tank, which caused this to get a lot warmer than I wanted. But I have a little homemade touch mark and I figured I would put it on this patch inexpertly put it on that patch of a uh, rough spot there and I kind of buggered that all up anyway now that that's done this needs its usual triple normalization cycle. I will see you when it comes time to quench it. Oh boy. I think the worst thing ever is having gas running out. Oh, God damn it, stop stabbing the bottom. While well, you're trying to do something that requires precise heats and precise times. Oh, has it been 30 seconds yet? Very, very worried. As small and thin as this is, it seems to warp just out of sheer meanness. Also, I stabbed the end into a brick getting it out of the uh, forge there, so I kind of uh, bent it. Did some very rough straightening efforts to the paratons. I also forgot to bring a file for testing that it's at least as hard as a file. I swear it sharpened itself. grip is still a little... well, the whole thing kind of is. Well, if I put it in there, I'll lose it. Hmm. 
This isn't just I'm not just shaving off the Short of breaking it and checking it with a microscope, I have no idea what more of a test I can do for hardness than with the file. Have I just been deluding myself with all my other knives? You know... I have the oven up. I'm going to temper it. I'm going to goof around with it. I'm going to see what I can do. I'm not going to worry about the scales at the moment, but I'm going to see if I can't figure out what's going wrong. Or if nothing else, like, it's definitely harder than it was, but God, I'm so confused. I don't know why. Why is this not working? 